Okay, I just want to talk a bit about myself, um, just so you know who I am, um, because I get some people say, oh, you have the answers for everything. It's not. The whole point I'm trying to make here is you can make positive changes yourself. When I left school, um, I did a apprenticeship, uh, what they were called youth training back then. Um, I, I was installing um, security alarm systems and going to college and got my city and guilds and electronics. There was a problem with that in the fact that my electronics knowledge was far superior to the, the role that was given and by the year, the end of year one I'd already finished my seating guilds but the company owner is notoriously tight financially so it was requested that you've got me because I'd been given a driver um, basically the guy didn't know alarm systems he would drive me around, I'd do the installations and he would learn off me um, basically he got low pay and I got low pay because I, I got my £35 a week um, which is nothing um, it, it wasn't enough to live on um, you know from basic you know considering I'm working 40 hours a week but anyway so I was going to college um, as well as on a day release did my electronics got there had this job with uh, this um, alarm company um, requested that I was given a rise at least um, since I was doing all the work uh, ended up in me getting the push from that job now you may think well I shouldn't have done that because I was getting college it's they get paid for me working for them and I'm doing all the work that somebody's getting paid um, 300 pounds a week to do um, so the point being the guy that I trained back then, I'm still friends with now because it was me that actually trained him in electronics and electrical installations. <laughs> um, but when I left there, it was just like a bit of a shock that, you know, this person didn't even see the value in me. But at the same time, he, afterwards, when I went back to the training center, um, he'd done it to the last 12 people. So uh, I hate people like that. Uh, that's what I'm saying on it. I could create another video on that. Um, but when went to college again to do the second year. The second year, um, I couldn't get a placement. I had no money. Um, I was working in a nightclub, uh, not as a dancer, but I was working behind the bar in a in a disco type nightclub. Um, and going to college, and then I worked for. A, another a computer company when a placement come up that also didn't pay people very well in fact it's got a history of people getting their uh, degrees and then leaving um, they just use people for cheap labor um, not an issue with that because when you're doing your training years you don't expect to be uh, earning big money uh, but you'd like to be able to afford a sandwich every day <laughs> um, so I worked for that company, I worked in a nightclub on the night, I went to college as well and then I finished my electronics. When I finished electronics obviously my training stops. When my training stops I couldn't get a job um, because the recession had hit. This was the uh, late 80s, early 90s recession. So I went and became a cabinet maker. Uh, you probably think why would I get involved with making furniture well the fact is that was all that was available and you probably see a pattern here because the thing is i'm very rarely out of work because i'll do whatever it takes so i started with sanding drawers all day uh, eight hours a day sanding drawers measuring them cutting drawers sanding them making them for a couple of years um but at that time i wasn't really fast you know because i have got enough money in my pocket now I've got a car I was okay you know this is the thing I know what it's like to get in one of those ruts where you don't progress your life because I've done it but I then seen an opportunity to work for a another company that builds flat back houses timber frame houses um, they paid more so I went there now when I took that job on my eyes opened up um, because it was a man's world it was a uh, there was no women that worked there not even in the offices it was purely a man's world construction wise um, it was all 
big big guys lifting timber all day because most of it's manhandled and building timber frame walls and I loved it um, the pay was great I was making taking home about one and a half thousand pound a week um, because it was piecework and the thing with me is I thrive on piecework so I had that for a while um, and then that place shut down it was sold to a competitor that then just in their pearls of wisdom uh, made everyone redundant then realized they needed those people because they're very hard to train most of the guys um, had been there 20 years to, to get the speed will take you about two or three years so I went on holiday get made redundant I took this job on uh, at this kitchen factory um, just so that when I come back after my redundancy I had a job to go to after my holiday started there got my first pay packet and it was nothing it was about 150 pounds which for me wasn't even a day's pay um, and that was for the week so I'm looking at it I thought I can't stay here and there was a couple of guys doing the the cabinets for you know the ones where you um, or the ornate kitchen hoods where you have all the trims around the top and they were doing and they were from an agency so I just started chatting to them and saying well we get 12 pounds an hour and I'm like well why are you getting paid 12 pounds an hour when these guys are struggling to get fine it's like because we're agency and that was the first bit I was introduced to contracting so that lunchtime I got a number off them and I rang these guys up and they said yeah we've got jobs available um, there's some exhibition work and I thought okay I'll take it um, and somebody else next to me heard the same conversation going on and asked if he could have the phone number and he then joined me and the majority of the carpenters did from that kitchen factory in that day because um, myself I left that afternoon um, and the guy that was with me, funny enough, it was him that instigated it because he turned around and said, well, I'm going to take my tools and sharpen them ready for tomorrow. He says, if I only do this for three months, it's going to pay me more. Um, it's going to pay me at least six months wages, um, if not 12 months in what I'm doing here. So that's more important. So he left and we left. I went on the exhibition circuit. Very hard work. Um, it upgraded my capabilities it upgraded my um, thinking because the environment is um, an architect will come up with a drawing there's no dimensions on it they have a, a vision of what the client wants it's not related to anything it's just a drawing but then you're going okay well you got these cars how's the car sitting on it well they want a rotating table so it's rotating, so we need four motors to spin that, how are we going to build that? And you're building all this on the fly. There's no drawings, there's just a sketch. And you're like, how big is the car? Work out how big the car is, building the rotation table, getting on a tilt, and your carpentry abilities start to shine um, because you're taking them to the maximum of your ability. Um, exhibition work is quite dusty, dirty. Um, but I remember the end of the first year it comes to the 23rd of December and work start and it says right thanks guys well, don't need you till at least February and I thought what am I going to do now you know it's Christmas time there's no there's no work what am I going to do and what happened was I hadn't even realized how much money I had in the bank because I was working every day I actually had 26,000 pounds in the bank that had been saved up over the time I'd worked um, because a long day there is 36 hours um, because you would work right, the th right through the night sleep for four hours be back in again and that was like for months you know you're working a lot of hours um, hard work but it's seasonal which means you got more flexibility in doing stuff you want to do um, I remember my sister's ex boyfriend saying to me I've realized that you earn more than me even though you only work part of the year and that's true and that's been like that ever since so 
the point is that's that's where uh, my carpentry came from. Um, I then mixed that with the electronics and stuff because I ended up in the FM industry. Um, I started off doing maintenance work. Um, I upgraded my training. I trained as a locksmith. I can pick locks open and that sort of stuff. Um, I improved my knowledge on security and fire alarm systems and electronic locks, uh, security bollards, you name it. I've worked on it. Um, then I got into heat and ventilation and air conditioning. Um, very expansive knowledge. Um, and I've slowly worked my way up, up to where I am today. Um, I analyze contracts. I analyze uh, problems within contracts, compliance. Uh, I build asset lists, asset lists that generate the maintenance regimes. I analyze whether the maintenance regimes are correct. Um, I help develop the actual asset management um, uh, process and what it's actually achieving. You know, when we first did it, it was just for maintenance regimes. Now we've introduced life cycles, we've introduced um, preventive maintenance, uh, we've introduced cost replacements, um, ability to bid, ability to quote. Um, all of this from a very small, um, humble PPM regime, which is the periodic maintenance, um, and has expanded out into all these other bids, which are easy to maintain things, but also keep things within budget. It also identifies how many people you need, but the equipment you've got. That's what I do. Um, so I just wanted to let you know what I do. and. I've got clients such as the NHS, National Health Service in the UK, uh, Shell Oil. Uh, I'm currently working on Shell Oil in the UK, but I also work for them in Qatar, Oman, um, Abu Dhabi. Um, we also got Siemens Turbines, um, some of their big high street names. I've worked for and developed a lot of maintenance programs for all these different companies. So. The point being here is you can progress your career. There's nothing stopping you. Mine has always been about investing in my own training. I haven't relied on the companies to do everything. So a lot of time the companies don't want to invest in you. That's why they're always poaching people. That's why you see the advertising uh, air conditioning engineer wanting work. They could train somebody, but they just don't. They don't want to invest in them. It's, it's just the environment. The problem they're getting now is those gaps are starting to open up into cracks because they haven't been investing in people for a long time. Um, and it's not getting any better, but at least they're starting to notice that advertising the same um, job role with the same salary as it was 10 years ago, nobody's taking it. The jobs sit empty for months. Um, for myself, I'm currently working for a company directly, uh, but I will be going back to contracting. The difference in money, um, I would say salary wise, I earn about probably about 70% less than I do as a contractor. The only difference is it's easier to get a mortgage, it's easier to do immigration stuff, it's easier to um, just do the day to day things with having a permanent job. But if you're a contractor, you can take the money and a lot of time if you're taking the money all those bits and pieces of paper that you normally need for everything else you don't really need because you've got the cash and cash talks just as much as uh, getting a mortgage or anything else um, because personally if I went back to contracting and did a stint in the Middle East I could buy several houses in Spain in cash um, without a doubt but that this is me that's basically a bit about me um, just so you got an idea of who I am. Alright, thanks for watching.